passes crucial legislation on merchant shipping. Government agrees on funding arrangements to complete airport terminal and runway in Barbuda. Giving Liat an opportunity to soar again, Antigua and Barbuda leads by example in writing off the airline's debts. And frightening crash on High Street leaves a female motorist injured. The details of the ABS Evening News right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. On a busy news evening, thank you so much for joining us for the ABS Evening News here on ABS and Tigas News Authority. My name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Shereen Jeremy. And a pleasant good evening to all our viewers joining us on Facebook and at home. And the Antigua and Barbuda Merchant Shipping Amendment Bill of 2020 was passed in the lower house today. That's right, Shereen. We have quite a few stories to tell you about from the nation's legislature today. Let's begin with this story from ABS's Jessica Russell. To bring Antigua and Barbuda in line with international conventions was brought before the House of Representatives. Prime Minister Gaston Brown moved the Antigua and Barbuda Merchant Shipping Amendment Bill. To enhance the ability of the Department of Marine Services to give effect to Antigua and Barbuda maritime treaty obligations. Conventions on international maritime traffic, search and rescue, and suppression of unlawful acts will now have legal effect under the bill, which also serves this purpose. To introduce a new avenue for registering ships under the Antigua and Barbuda flag. And this, in essence, Mr. Speaker, will allow us to expand the flag, the um, Antigua and Barbuda flagship, by attracting more business. So, for example, the bill calls for the appointment of a principal representative. This representative will act as an agent of ship owners to register ships in Antigua. The bill was passed without amendment. The bill has been read a third time and passed accordingly. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Thanks, Jessica. Meanwhile, Member of Parliament for Barbuda came in for stinging critique from government members following his contribution to the debate on the legislation. Here again, ABS is Jessica Russell. When Prime Minister Gaston Braun moved the Merchant Shipping Amendment Bill, he called it non-contentious. But that was before a member of Parliament for Barbuda, Trevor Walker, arose to make his contribution. This government has been moving down or going on a particular path, in my view, to disenfranchise local Antiguans and Barbudans in this particular space. Walker says the local boat operators have recently had their vessels grounded by the Antigua and the Barbuda Department of Maritime Services. He read a letter by the authority on the issue. Enforcement actions against vessels which are operating in violation of the Merchant Shipping Act and which may pose a risk to the safety of maritime navigation. And Mr. Speaker, I have no problems in days of safety issue. But it has to be dealt with in a particular way. You cannot shut down a, a particular space arbitrarily, Mr. Speaker. However, Attorney General Sedroy Benjamin referred to the same letter read by Walker to outline issues Adams had with the vessels. Know that boat vehicles had been previously detained one year before. In other words, they have severe structural corrosion and tank leaching from wasted hull blading. In other words, they recorded 24 deficiencies when they were inspected. And Mr. Walker doesn't expect that that vessel is to be detained. Information Minister Melford Nicholas says Antigua has seen the effects of unsafe marine craft. And in 2015, Mr. Speaker, there was the sinking of a barge between Antigua and Barbuda. One person died. The cargo was lost. Prime Minister Gaston Brown says the boat operators must comply with regulations. These barges and boats and so on, and they know that they're not seaworthy, they have an obligation to fix them. And that is what Adams is saying to them. And if these um, assets cannot be fixed, well, clearly they should be grounded. Otherwise, you're putting people's lives at risk. Jessica Russell, ABS News. 
You know, ABS News has obtained a copy of the letter written by the Adams director who, which featured prominently in today's parliamentary debate. Now, during the intense exchanges across the aisle, government MPs accused the Barbuda MP of being intellectually dishonest and deceitful. The letter was written by a director of the Antiguan Barbuda Department of Marine Services and Merchant Shipping, Dwight Gardner. It was dated July 22, 2020 and addressed to the permanent secretary in the office of the Prime Minister, Joan Carrot. It focused on enforcement actions against vessels which are are operating in violation of the Merchant Shipping Act. Now, the letter said these may pose a threat to the safety of shipping, the marine environment, and the persons and cargo operating on board or being transported on these vessels, bearing in mind the potential harm from a maritime incident, end quote. Now, Mr. Gardner referenced the sinking of a barge carrying cargo between Barbuda and Antigua in February 2015, which resulted in the death of one person. Mr. Walker had suggested the effect of the letter imperils the supply of crucial supplies to Barbuda. However, the letter from the Adams director had addressed that issue as well, a section of the letter which government MPs accused the MP of conveniently choosing not to read. This is it, quote, whilst vessels which provide trade between Antigua and Barbuda may provide a vital service to the nation, it is equally important that everyone, if mindful or is mindful of the risks associated with the operation of substandard vessels, end quote. Attorney General Honorable Stedroy Benjamin excoriated the Barbuda MP. Honest, misleading, mischievous, and disgustingly dishonest intellectually. The dog Janika and Badge Amir N, owned by Nak Bill Ned, they are flagged in Togo, not even in Antigua in Togo. Let me continue, man. I'm going to expose your deceit to the people of this country today. And are therefore foreign flagged vessels operating in Antigua and Barbuda coastal trade. You know, Member of Parliament for St. Philip's South Honorable Lennox Weston also responded on the issue. We can't dump down the Parliament with a level of debate. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. <clears throat> And I don't care what side we are on, we got to ensure that our first priority is to develop this country. Nobody vote for us to come to Parliament to talk about those little trivial things that can be settled so easily. You have 24 issues with the boat. Go to the bank and borrow some money, make money, and fix the boat, and meet the requirements, and go and make your money. But don't say because you're Antigua and the boat defective, we must take a chance of you have an accident. <coughs> Just fix the thing and move on. And regarding the issue of consultation raised by MP Walker, the letter says, quote, at all times, the technical teams at Adams have engaged with the owners and operators of these vessels with a view to ensuring compliance with the legal requirements and to ensure that the vessels are brought up to standard, end quote. Well, the government has reached a deal with the developers of the Peace, Love and Happiness project in Barbuda to fund the completion of a new airport terminal and runway on the Sister Isle. ABS's Rakib Aparicio has the details on what the government is calling a win-win arrangement. The multi-billion dollar Peace, Love and Happiness project is said to be a significant economic stimulant for the Sister Isle of Barbuda and for the country as a whole. The developers will build hundreds of luxury cottages along Coco and Palmetto points. Information Minister the Honorable Melford Nicholas says the goal is for the PLH investment to be opened by October 2021. However, there is a concern the airport terminal on Barbuda will not be ready in time. So within the ensuing period where they may have to um, woo some of the guests and uh, for them to arrive, they will obviously have to arrive by commercial aircraft and come to Antigua. He says an agreement has been arrived at for PLH to lease an area of the old terminal at VC Bird International Airport for the developers to establish an executive lounge. A welcoming facility, the airport lounge, where they could then uh, transfer the clients from the international flights to that lounge and then buy other private aircraft, get them into Barbuda. Meanwhile, to complete work on the Barbuda airport terminal and runway, PLH will be lending the government U.S. $8 million. That loan will then be repaid by the government through revenues generated at the Barbuda terminal, as well as from the lease agreement at the old terminal at VC Bird Airport. Whatever resources and revenues that the government are committed to obtain from the new development and from the new economy of the new facility in Barbuda with the new airport uh, will go towards uh, funding and liquidating those loans.
it's an arrangement where we can have both the development of the uh, PLH project and uh, the airport in Barbuda without any significant outlay from the government or any impact on the Treasury, the cash flows of the Treasury. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. The Barbuda Airport Terminal and Runway will remain the property of the government and people of Antigua and Barbuda. Rakib Aparish reporting for ABS News. Thanks, Rakib. Meanwhile, more news from this morning's post-Cabinet media briefing because Cabinet has decided to write off all of Antigua and Barbuda's debt uh, or owed by Liat amounting to some $8.5 million. The uh, monies were split mainly between the Antigua and Barbuda Airport Authority, APUA, and taxes as a result of ticket sales. Of course, this was $8.5 million owed by Liat to Antigua and Barbuda. The government has decided to write that off. Government is not yet sure if other stakeholder countries will do the same by writing off Liat's debt to those countries, but is encouraging them to do the same. Whether or not it, it uh, gets the consent and approval and agreement of those other governments um, is a matter for their own consideration. Uh, we're hopeful that it would because it will give Liat um, a new lease on life uh, to be able to rid itself of some of these long-term liabilities that um, have been the bugbear of its operations. Now, without the burden of these debts, the information minister believes Liat would be in a better position to craft out its routes based purely on commercial considerations. So if Liat is required to fly into a territory and it is not feasible uh, for it to do so without the, uh, the guarantees, the load factor guarantees, uh, then uh, those would have to be um, you know, put in place. And so a host government uh, may not expect Liat to fly into their territory without making those types of commitments. The government of Antigua and Barbuda has allocated over U.S. $2 million for the purchase of COVID-19 vaccines once they become available. Information Minister the Honorable Melford Nicholas told journalists at Thursday's post-Cabinet media briefing about the necessity of this measure. We were faced, as many other countries were, uh, with the challenge of procuring the necessary supplies in the fight against COVID. And so this is a precautionary measure, which I think has come at the appropriate point in time. Minister Nicholas says the government will be guided by health experts regarding the approved vaccine. The United Nations agencies have um, available to them um, some of the, the best experts in the field. And uh, we are going to be certainly uh, guided by, by those um, directives and those guidelines that we obtain from, from PAHO. The minister also stated that the government will be procuring the vaccines through an agreement with the COVID-19 vaccine global access facility, COVAX. The agreement is required to be signed by August 31st. And speaking about COVID-19, Antigua and Barbuda's COVID-19 case count remains at 94 with two active cases and 89 recoveries. That's the latest information from the Health Ministry's dashboard, which contained information as at 6 Tuesday evening. The ministry says 21 samples processed at Mount St. John's Medical Center all yielded negative results. The dashboard shows 1,875 people have now been tested in Antigua and Barbuda. Just over 2,000 samples taken from these individuals. Covering Antigua and Barbuda and the world, this is the ABS Evening News still to come in this newscast. Slain Customs Officer Nigel Christian Lane laid to rest today. Details and coverage coming up on that. We'll tell you about those emotional scenes there. And female motorist injured in a crash which caused a major stir on High Street this morning. We'll tell you about those details and the condition of the motorist upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Stay with us. At Najico, the things that matter to you, matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long, but after all these years, you just can't let go. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. It's not easy getting rid of these types of greases every day. It's hard work. But if you really think about it, it's not really us 
doing the cleaning. At Total Import Supplies, we believe it's all about the product. Our extensive new line of ChemClean products are extremely concentrated, eco-friendly, effective, and guaranteed to make your life a whole lot easier. Whether you're cleaning at home, the office, or at industrial type spaces, when it comes to food-based solvents, sanitizers, cleaners, floor care, commercial machines, and dispensers for laundry care, let the product do most of the work for you. Introducing the best brands in the cleaning business from ChemClean Limited. Available only from Total Import Supplies. Growing minds need the right tools. Vacationing is over and summer is gone. The new school year is right around the corner. Growing Minds deserve the best tools. At Harper's Office Depot, we carry the widest range of school supplies in Antigua and Barbuda. We stock a full range of art supplies, technical drawing supplies, preschool supplies, and the widest range of pens. Visit us on the corner of High and Market Street in downtown St. John's and at our superstore at Village Walk Center on Friars Hill Road. Growing Minds need attention and love. Give the Growing Minds and your family the best. Give them all their back-to-school supplies from Harper's Office Depot. And for every $200 spent, get a free Crayola gift. Harper's, we mean school business. Now, Principal Inspector of Customs, Nigel Christian, was laid to rest following a funeral service at St. John's Cathedral this afternoon. Jeremy J. Roche has more. The Customs Department suspends its regular operations Thursday as a large number of workers are seen moving through the streets of St. John's. They walk ahead of the hearse carrying the last remains of their slain colleague, Nigel Christian, a.k.a. Axe. A somber moment as Paul Bearers rolled the silver casket to the aisle at St. John's Cathedral. The service is attended by several officials, including Governor General Sir Rodney Williams and Comptroller of Customs Raju Badu. As family members say goodbye to their loved one, there is no doubt a longing for closure as investigations into Christian's murder continues. The principal customs officer was shot dead in the Winthrop's July 10 after he was reportedly abducted from his home by four men. There have so far been no arrests in the matter. Information Minister Melford Nicholas says the government is providing all resources needed to assist the police. The minister adds the U.S.-based Federal Bureau of Investigations is also assisting in the murder probe. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. And pictures now from a frightening crash on High Street, which left a female motorist injured and a major stir on the busy High Street in the capital. The woman who was the only occupant in the vehicle was rushed to hospital after the Suzuki vehicle she was driving slammed into the land registry building. Eyewitnesses say the motorist was leaving the parking lot on the opposite side of the road at high speed, in the process bursting through the chain at the entrance. The vehicle then accelerated and smashed into a utility pole in front of the land registry, breaking it near the base before crashing into the building. Reports are that the dazed motorist exited the vehicle, holding her head before being assisted by passersby. It is still not clear why she exited the parking lot allegedly at such speed, but the attendants say she did not speak with them. 
one of the two women at the parking lot who was visibly shaken said she was worried the vehicle would have crashed into the small structure where they collect fees the crash resulted in people on the usually busy thoroughfare scurrying scurrying for cover onlookers at the crash site marveled about what happened and could be heard expressing relief that no pedestrians were in the path of the vehicle an APUA team de-energized power lines in the area as they prepared to replace the wrecked pole. Well, the date and arrangements for the funeral service of trade unionist, former parliamentarian and author Sir Keith Lynn Smith will be announced in the coming days. That's according to the Antigua and Barbuda Workers Union in a statement released to the media earlier today. The union also announced that it will begin a period of mourning that will last for 15 days starting from the 1st of September. The union says the occasion will be used to honor the life and legacy of Sir Keith Lynn, who is the ABWU's second and longest serving general secretary. The union office will remain open during the period of mourning. Besides his achievements in fighting for the rights of workers, Sir Keith Lynn has won acclaim as the author of To Shoot Hard Labor. The government has accorded Sir Keith Lynn an official funeral, and the union, along with family members, will be involved in its planning. And all public servants are being advised to return to a full work schedule effective immediately. This directive from the Cabinet cancels any previous authorizations and decisions by permanent secretaries to limit the hours of public servants. With schools reopening on September 7th, Cabinet is advising all government employees to return to duty with immediate effect. Meanwhile, Cabinet is viewing with concern that some business places are yet to return to their normal hours of business. It fears that the reduced hours of operation can have a negative impact on the country's economy as it struggles with the fallout from COVID-19. It is therefore asking members of the private sector to return to their full hours of operation as of the 1st of September. Europa Hardware is donating over $30,000 worth of power tools to frontline workers in this country. This is the company's way of saying thank you to the workers for their efforts in fighting the coronavirus disease. Well, Jamie J. Roche reports on how this will be done and how you can benefit. Eligible workers include police officers, firefighters, nurses, and other healthcare workers. Europa Antigua store supervisor Christine Horsford says over 30 machines will be donated next Friday using a raffle system to select the recipients. We will have like a box with all the names and then me or Niara, whichever one of us, will shake the box and then we'll pick a name. Yeah. To get their names in the box, sales administrator Niara Joseph says frontline workers can register by visiting, calling the store, or leaving a message after liking Europa Hardware Antigua Facebook page. The information you would give us is your name, your address, where you're stationed, your telephone number, and your work ID number. Depending on where the recipients fall in the draw, they could receive a steel hedge trimmer, grass and leaf blower, grass trimmer, or brush cutter. Europa has done similar donations at its branches in Grenada and St. Lucia, and donations are also planned for frontline workers in St. Kitts. Jamie J. Rocher, ABS News. Education officer for special needs Joyan Harrigan says more needs to be done to provide work for people with special needs after they've completed school. We have not gotten there, we have not thought about that sufficiently and begin to tap into our youth who have special needs. The education officer is calling on employers in both the private and public sectors to provide work opportunities for people with special needs. They can function at some level and they can develop skills. We can hone their skills and we can use them. Even if it's one skill, they can do something and they can contribute. She was among the guests on Education in Prime Time with host Ursula Charles Jr. last evening. Well, as the closed season for harvesting queen conch comes to an end, the fisheries division is issuing the reminder it is never open season for sea turtles. This is being made clear by Acting Deputy Chief Fisheries Officer, Tricia Lovell. All turtle species are protected in Antigua and Barbie. We are not allowed to harvest at any time. There is no open season for turtles. Um, so uh, what previously, it, you were allowed to harvest, but when our legislation changed in 2013, we imposed an, a complete moratorium. So you're not allowed to harvest any turtles' eggs uh, for the meat, hatchlings, nothing. And she outlines some of the complaints the revision has been receiving. 
And don't harass the turtles either, oh. because this is another thing that we had to put in the legislation. Because we have had also incidences of persons seeing the turtles coming up to nest, and they might harass them. So a few years ago, I recall, there was an incident where a leatherback, obviously, it's, leatherbacks are huge turtles, so it's quite a sight to see. And somebody decided, oh, I want to ride the oh, back of this turtle. Yeah. They tied it to their vehicle, pulled it up, the beach flipped it over. It was crazy. The official is asking you to note very carefully, it is also against the law to keep sea turtles as pets. All right. That's to bring an end to a look at national developments, Jermaine, a very, very busy news night, and we're continuing to track more developments. Of course, Parliament continuing, that's the Parliament's lower house of Parliament, uh, continuing on the GIS channel, so you can also uh, keep up with all the developments there in the nation's legislature. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news overseas and tell you about this one in the region. We'll tell you that uh, calls in St. Kitts to spur economic revival from, with the help of CIP citizens. And Father Rafield, Hurricane Laura slams into the U.S. state of Louisiana. All those details coming up after the break.